Welcome to the Science and Education segment on Impact. I'm Barbara Brabetz. Joining us here today, we have a treat. We have Christine Sheehan of Proctors. She's here to talk about the educational opportunities for young and old and all in between here at Proctors. Christine, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to have you here. I understand that you've been a fixture at Proctors, but you've also been a fixture in the area for quite some time. Where do you come from? Where do you hail from? I grew up in western New York, uh, about an hour from here in St. Johnsville, a little rural village. I know it well. Yes, uh, and you know, and, and Fonda. So I, we, my parents moved from Fonda to St. Johnsville. So when you decide, when you graduated from high school and you were thinking about career opportunities, mm -hmm. education sprung to mind, but what was, what was really your desire? The arts. I was inspired by the arts here at Proctor's when I was in high school. Um, I always had a passion for it, but I decided that I would like to go into um, music education, and that's where I started. So where did you go to school? I went to the Crane. I started at SCCC. They have a fabulous music program there. And it's I went from the county, right, just in exactly, case you're out of the area. Yes. And from there, I went to the Crane School temporarily and changed my major to uh, business administration. So I up came north. Back to the region. Oh, yes. Yes, definitely. Came back Talk to the region. St. <laughs> <laughs> Johnsville's got nothing on Potsdam. <laughs> Uh, so you came back to the area mm -hmm. and an opportunity came up here at Proctor's. Right. How did that... Uh, just With an internship. It was a business internship, uh, uh, interestingly, and uh, I had to fight, fight for it very hard. Um, but, it, but I ended up here with um, the then executive director, Gloria Lemire, as her assistant. And I was able to work my way in and around departments and, and up through the organization over the past 20 years. 20 years. So you were six during that internship. <laughs> Everyone says that to me. That's a great way to get in your best graces. That's sweet. <laughs> Actually, surviving two decades in a nonprofit or an arts industry is very difficult. So I congratulate you for that. You've kind of worn many hats here at Proctor's yes. and um, certainly I think one of uh, your most memorable hats will be as education director here at Proctor's. True. So let's talk a little bit about the educational history at Proctor's. Proctor's is of course an arts venue. It's been here since the 20s mm -hmm. and uh, it wasn't really built for the um, the beaver hat wearing mm -hmm. mink coat set mm -hmm. in Schenectady. Mm -hmm. It was really built as an outreach to the community, both poor and rich. True. So in its first days, it was really an educational outreach program. True. Uh, and donors flocked and it was built and it survived all these many years. Right. So let's talk about what people think of when they think of education with an arts institution. What's the typical educational mode? Typically they think of audience development, audience engagement, um, which is all true and valid, valid. Uh, but they, they would think w that we only bring, um, you know, kids in to see Rumpelstiltskin <laughs> on stage, you know, which, you know, there are many other things that we have in, in education programming nowadays across the country. Programs are built to um, inspire appreciation of the arts and build community and uh, inspire change in teaching and learning. Well, I don't want to diminish what you do for school-aged children because with shrinking budgets across the state and the nation, arts are often cut yes. and this can really fill a gap. So what happens here after school, for example, if, <coughs> if you have a local child who really wants to experience something other than cable television mm -hmm. after school? Mm -hmm. We have after-school programs in the media arts here now. It was. Uh, we created them to fit a relevant community need. You know, there are a lot of um, children right here in Schenectady, for example, that don't have access to arts programming after school or during the school hours. So we offer um, programs that, uh, TV production programs and programs where kids can come and create their own TV show and uh, create film and media um, for middle school students basically right now.
it's not just your average macaroni and paint on a piece no, of paper. No, it's I mean, not. God bless them. Although but. we could probably fill those programs too. <laughs> right, but much more imaginative, engaging, uh, yes. students actually getting to do things right. that are productive and meaningful to right. them. I think, uh, um, you know, with broadcast television here, we did a lot of exploration on what would, what would be relevant in the media arts. You know, kids are so interested in technology now. What could we offer that's going to fill a real need for them? And they're all interested. You know, they're all creating YouTube videos. They're all on you know MySpace and Facebook. And they're they're you know my two year old knows more about my phone than I do. So <laughs> I I think that that's why those programs are so popular. Well, aside from the after school programs, there's summer offerings that are here that you've put out quite an array of summer institutes and camps yes. for local and people from all over the world really right. who can come here and experience it. Uh, do you want to mention any of those before we talk about some of your more innovative right. ideas? Yes. Well, we rebranded our programs over the summer this year to start a school of the performing arts. And that's so that we could expand on the relationships that we have with Broadway producers and performing touring companies and actors and actresses in New York City and around the nation to come here and teach um, skill building and technique classes. Um, so we expanded that part of our summer programming and uh, we exceeded capacity this year. I'm sure it'll be even more popular this coming year. What age group really is targeted for the School of Performing Arts? We have all ages, but most of those programs go from ages 12 and up, and then we have the, um, the summer adventures portion that we always had for kids who are just maybe not sure of what their interest is right now, and they just sort of want to dabble in drama or sort of want to just check out improvisation. So we have those programs too, starting at age eight. Oh, eight. Mm -hmm. Wow. So they could get a full 10 years yes. <laughs> of experience in before they can get their SAG Sequential card. programming building. That's true. That's Boy, true. they'll have more years of me on TV <laughs> by the time they can drive. Wow. Um, well, now you've flustered me. But anyway, uh, let's talk about some of the non-traditional educational programming that I know you offer and that I certainly enjoy. Okay. Um, the after uh, performance lectures where you have people come right off the stage all sweaty, drinking yes. their water, yes. and they're there <laughs> to engage with the audience. And I think it's probably very fulfilling for both the audience and the performers. Yes. Can you kind of give us a flavor as to what your feedback is of how these uh, after performance lectures go? Yes, that's our theater talk series. Uh, we started those years ago um, primarily as a way to reach the high school audiences. They wanted something extra if they were going to invest their field trip dollars. They want to put everything into it they possibly could when they were here. Um, but it's grown to include all of our audiences. Anyone who buys a ticket can come to a theater talk. Um, but that's a way for uh, our audience to engage actors, actresses, stage managers, production crew, anyone that we can get to um, talk about um, the behind the scenes um, flavor of how a show goes on. Yeah, it's, it's not always just the glitz and the glam. It's not always glamorous. They'll tell you everything you want to know about being on the road. I, I bet it's been uh, a little shocking sometimes. Uh, you don't do this uh, and make a profit per se. You're really funded by external sources. Yes. Um, 
Every program that we create is funded by either a sponsor or a grantor in some shape or form. So everything that we do is, is here as a service. We're not here to make a profit. That's not our mission. Um, we're here to serve the community with relevant programming. And do you have some programs that are being retooled for the upcoming years for some of the urban high schools in our area? Yes, there's a great program that not many people know about because it is in two select locations right now and certainly can expand, but it's called MediaWorks and it's a full-time program. We have a full-time media educator in two high schools, Schenectady High School and Albany High School in ninth grade English and 10th grade Global History. Oh. And, that, and those programs were created to combat um, failure rates at those grade levels. And uh, it integrates a film educator with um, English language arts and global history to, you know, change learning pathways for um, It's great. Engage students. them, make, make it relevant to what they right. see and feel and, right. and want to learn about. So right. if someone's out there and they want to, uh, they say that would be great for my mm -hmm. ninth or 10th grade mm -hmm. student coming up, mm -hmm. um, how would they find out more information of how to bring it to their school if they're not within Schenectady High sure. or Albany High? Yes. Contact us. Either go on our website at proctors.org or contact me. My um, information and, uh, and everyone on my staff, all our information is listed on our website. Plus, we'll put your email right here on okay. the page mm -hmm. so that uh, they can Everyone see it. Everyone can call me at any time. <laughs> That's right. That's fine. That's great. Uh, now, what else is coming up that you'd like to tease us with? Because mm. there's so much to go through. I, um, I want to make sure that people are aware. We talk about the fact that we're here as a community resource and uh, for all members of the community. I want to really drive that point home um, that we're here to, you know, level the, the learning field and level, um, you know, erase borders between um, groups of our society. And we offer a host of scholarships. Much of our funding goes to scholarships for our programs, whether it's the School of Performing Arts or sending students to after-school programs or um, participating in, I can't, you know, off the top of my head, any of our programs have scholarship opportunities. Classrooms can apply online. Um, individuals can apply online. All of our forms and information is clearly there, uh, and we go through those just about daily. Transportation scholarships. Oh, that's good, because um, again, that's right. cut often yes, when yes. it comes to school budgets, yes. the cost of diesel is well over four dollars a gallon right. and getting that school bus here is expensive. Right, right. So all the initiatives are there. Mm -hmm. If you build it, do they come? They do come. How, do, how, are, the, how are we doing here at Proctor? Our programs are doing exceptionally well, I'm, I'm pleased to say. There have been many trends across the nation when the economy started to um, go south. I don't know if I should use that <laughs> word. If the, when the economy had a downturn, we, we definitely um, seem to maintain some of our, most of our programming, and the reason is because of those scholarships, I'm, I'm certain of it. Well, it's important, too, for everyone to see that you don't have to make sacrifices when it right. comes to your child's education just because your economy or the local economy is uh, not doing as well right. as we would right. want it to be. Christine Sheehan, we have a whole host of wonderful opportunities here. Uh, we'll give you some still shots of the uh, catalog. If someone wants the catalog delivered to their house, say they don't have the internet, then they can call give here us a at call. Proctors. Absolutely, we'll mail it out. Yep, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's amazing if you set it at your dinner table and you ask your kids, <laughs> what would you like to do? Right. You might be surprised with the answer that you get, but I'm sure there's something in here for everyone. everyone. It's been a pleasure to have you here, Thank Christine. You. And I hope I get to sit in on some more of the theater talks coming up. Me too. And uh, stay warm inside when the weather is bad outside. Christine Sheehan, thanks for coming. Thank you, Barbara. This has been the Science and Education Impact segment. I'm Barbara Bravitz. Thanks for watching.
Proctors, bringing the best in arts, education, and entertainment.